Hello friends, today we're going to be talking about Pika Web and how it helps us go back to a much simpler web development model where we don't need to have the abundance like Webpack and Parcel involved. Okay, so I've got Visual Studio code up in here. I'm just going to create a very quick uh, web component. I'll speed this bit up because it's just boilerplate really. Okay, so what I've created here is a simple web page that's going to have a custom component, my element, this one here, displayed on it, and it's literally just going to display this text for us from the uh, from the custom element. Uh, now, let's uh, let's do this as we would today if we were using um, Webpack, maybe. So, first of all, we're using lit element, so we need to do an npm um, an npm install for lit element. So I just set up the package.json and npm install lit element. And what we'll see then on the left over here is we're suddenly going to get a massive node modules folder. Um, and we can see we've got lit element pulled in and also its dependency on lit HTML. Um, and if we look in lit element itself, uh, if I look in the JS file here, we can see lots of imports um, without the path to the import. So the browser doesn't know how to find that. You know, Node um, Node knows how to find it, and Webpack will find it for us as well and insert the full the full path. Well, basically, it will it will bundle it all up into one file, so it doesn't even have to go and look for it. Um, so we can't rub, run this as is in a browser. Um, what we need to do is run Webpack on it. Uh, so if I kick that off, and um, I think this needs to be called index. Just trying to use the zero config for Webpack. It just looks for something in the source folder. Okay, so that's created, and we've got now in dist we've got a main JS. All, all very good. Uh, let's let's um, open out of live servers just so we can see that working. Okay, if I bring that up, we can see we've got yep, Pika Web Example coming up there. Okay, so when I make a when I make a change now to our code, so say I'm in here and I want to do uh, version two. Um, if I just save that off, we're not going to get you know hitting refresh. We're not going to get anything coming up in our page there. Now, yeah you'll have your development server, you'll have hot module reloading, um, but, but, but basically that is doing a build. You've got a build step and on a big project it can be slow um, and it's, it's just something else you've got to manage. So what Pika Web is trying to do is take us back, take us back five years to when we didn't have all this tooling. Um, and, and to do that they, 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 they've got a, a, an interesting idea in that they perform um, this bundling as a one-time operation when we pull the package in from NPM and, and, and just at that point only. Um, so what they do is then package it up using Rollup. Um, so we're actually using a bundler under the covers but we don't have to use it every time we make changes to our app. Um, so let, let, let's jump in and I'll, I'll show you exactly what that does. Uh, so let me just make this a bit bigger. Um, so what we need to do is get hold of Pika Web. Um, so let's do an npm install at pika web. That will bring the package in for us. Now I'm going to roll back a little bit of the um, webpack changes because we're not going to be using webpack anymore. So let me just get rid of the disk folder. We don't need that. And I'm going to bring our index.js back to the top level. Get rid of source. Okay. Right, so what we need to do now is run PikaWeb against our application. So we can uh, we can do an npx at PikaWeb. Now what this will do is look at our um, our packages and bundle them up into modules. 
um, that we can then use directly within the browser. And you don't know if you noticed, but over on the left here, we've got a new a web modules folder. And inside there, we haven't got the lots and lots of folders and subfolders and tests and all the other um, all the other code associated with the project. We've simply got our one lit element.js file. And certainly we also haven't got a lit um, HTML, this dependency. So this is a little mini bundle um, created by Rollup um, and it's ready for us to use. And because um, we're at this top level, we don't need to know anything about the path apart from the fact that it's in web modules. So any, any of these that we bring in, we just have to say um, web modules and then the name of the JavaScript file. It will actually, um, you know, if you have uh, modules that have got um, shared dependencies, it will create a commons bundle for you. So, you know, it's not going to explode into thousands of modules. We will get a common module as well. Um, but, you know, compared to bundling with Webpack where you might get, say, five or ten, you're going to get, a, you know, a lot more with this. But we're, we're basing this on using HTTP2, so there isn't a big impact to having lots and lots of downloads. And in fact, that's where um, where we're moving in terms of code splitting at the moment anyway. Um, so with that in place, I should now just be able to run this uh, without doing a build step. So let's do uh, open with live server and give it a refresh. And it's not working because index.js couldn't be found. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, no. So I'm getting confused here. What we, what I need to change, um, I need to be pulling in index.js there, our index.js, and then in index.js, let me get rid of the element, in index.js, the lit element, I need to be keying it in from web modules, like so. Bring that across, see it. Okay, so yes, yeah, so and now we're importing here, and I need to have the, um, the extension as well, JS as well. So let me save that off now, and we'll try again. And I've done one other thing that I need to remember, is that it needs to be type a module. So this um, Pika Web does rely on your modules being um, ES6 modules. They can't be a common JS or um, uh, or a, a required JS. It, it, it's only for use with um, uh, modern packages, and they've actually there's actually a um, a, pa um, a search facility to, to see what ones are available for your use. Um, and then so in terms of can we use this a day, it supports the latest evergreen browsers. I think one of the main things that missing is the UC browser for Android. But if you haven't got to support that, then you're, you're good to go with this for evergreen browsers. Um, so right, let's give it another try in here. Give that a click. Okay, so we've got the, um, the text coming back up again now. And now if I change this to version five in an angular kind of way, then I come back in then live reload is, is bringing that in without having a build step. Um, so there you go, Pika Web, very interesting. Uh, I could see this being used um, also with um, built-in modules. If you're interested in built-in modules, uh, I've got a video about that here. Very, very much worth a check out. Uh, and this, this approach means we don't need to use import maps, um, which is a Good thing about it. So there you go. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't, and click that subscribe button if you want to see some more in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.